<laughs> oh, hey kids, guess what? Last week, Pastor Kidden started a prank horror called Christmas with the Pranks. He got me really good, but I am about to get him back with this present. I can't wait for you to see. Pastor Maddie. Hi, Pastor Kendon. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. Okay, Pastor Maddie, I wanted to say about the whole prank thing we did last week. I think it's best if we just push it back to last week and don't worry about it this week. Let bygones be bygones and call it a truce. You know what? I think that's a great idea. In fact, to show you how much I've totally forgotten the prank war, I got you a present. Is that for me? I think you're really good. Whoa. Whoa, it's a really big present too. Okay, shake, 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 shake. Oh, there's definitely something in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whoa, you really put a lot of glitter on this you bow. You know what? I worked really hard. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Open it up. Woo. Woo. Oh. All right. I love opening presents. Wait a second, Pastor Maddie, this is a box of diapers. Did you just prank me again? Oh, no, 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 that's just the only box I could find. It's not diapers. Oh, okay, okay, well, this is a big box. So this must be a really, really good present. It's good and it's good for you. Wait, good for me? What are you talking about? What? A carrot? Oh, ah, gross, you oh. Did Okay, well, uh, Pastor Maddie and kids, I have some work to do, so I'll be right back. Oh, oh okay. Bye. Kids, we're going to worship Jesus right now, so stand up on your feet, and here we go. Come on, hands up across this place. Sunday morning, it's a new beginning, it's time to sing a new song, of endless praise, 
great job worshiping Jesus. Oh, look, here comes Pastor Kendon. Hey, Pastor Maddie, Good. I've got a question for you. Oh, okay. Do you want to go build a snowman? I love building snowmen. Perfect attack! <laughs> and done. <laughs> Pastor Maddie, you look like a great snowman. Wow, Pastor Kendon, that was um, really something. <laughs> Kids, I think it's time to check out the Christmas sheep. <laughs> All right, let's check out this big idea. Welcome back to Christmas with the sheep. Salutations. My name is Aristotle. You already met my friends Isaiah and Cletus, and we're back for one more week of the Christmas story. My view of the story is a bit different, you see, because I am one of the wise men's sheep, which makes me, ahem, wise. Yeah, he's real smart. He even helped me learn how to count sheep. One, two, skip a few. Anywho, the wise men had been waiting for years for the star to come. Not just any star, THE star! The one that would signal that the king had been born. We, being the distinguished sheep that we were, were very excited to journey across the land to find this new baby king. We assumed, like any self-respecting king, he would be born in a palace with servants in one of those cush pillow things and a bubble bath. We travelled for miles and miles. It took a long time, you see, because it seemed every ten minutes we were stopping for McDonald's and a potty break. But eventually we made it. We were anticipating a king's feast to welcome us. Fancy food and drinks, napkins folded up like swans, and tiny little forks for our salads. But what did we find when we arrived at the place the star stopped? Just a plain and simple house. And no throne room, no fancy dinner, just a baby and his mum and dad. At first I thought we got the wrong place, but then my owners pulled out their gifts. They gave this baby gold, frankincense and myrrh. Then they bowed down to worship him. It was so intriguing, really, he didn't have a fancy palace or robes or a crown. But we could all feel it. It was, oh, I don't know, um, peace. And though he looked like an ordinary child, this baby was no commoner. He was a king. He is our king. Jesus is our king. Thanks for watching Christmas with the Sheep. Wow, what an awesome big idea. I think we should practice our big idea together. Um, can, can I go change? Oh, <laughs> I almost forgot you were still a snowman. <laughs> okay, Pastor Maddie, you can go change while we practice our big idea. Okay. Oh. Alrighty kids, today our big idea is Jesus is our king. And so we should practice it like a snowman. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? Get your snowman going. You can go like this or like this. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Jesus <laughs> is <laughs> our king. Great job with that big idea. I've got it. We should practice it like Santa Claus. Oh, and perfect. I'm wearing all red. Okay, get your ho, 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 ho. All right, are you ready to practice our big idea? Ho, 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 ho. Jesus is our king. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. Hey, kids. The Bible is God's word. And I am so thankful that you're hanging out with us today because we get to talk even more about the Christmas story. For the past few weeks, we've been learning some really good big ideas from the Christmas story. The first week, we learned that Jesus is our savior. Last week, we learned that Jesus is our joy. And today, we are learning that Jesus is our king. What do you usually think about when you think about the word king? I like to think about things like this giant palaces and kingly robes and fancy food and crowns, maybe a throne room, servants, and a kingdom. But did you know that when King Jesus was born, he didn't have any of those things. In fact, he was born in a stable with animals. He didn't have a fancy king crib, he just had a manger. 
in today's story of the Bible, we are learning about the wise men. And they were people who had been studying the scriptures and they knew that a king was coming. Finally, they saw the king's star in the sky and they went to worship him. And I bet they were a little bit surprised when they came to find baby Jesus. But these wise men knew that Jesus was going to be the king. Not just the king of that country, but the king of the world. And not just for a little while, but for all time. He is called the king of kings. So right now, let's check out this story of Jesus and the wise men. The story of Christmas, Jesus and the wise men. This is Jesus. Jesus is the son of God who would grow up to do amazing things. His parents on earth were Mary Hi. and Joseph. Hey Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room for him anywhere else in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was part of Judea, an area that was ruled by a king named Herod. King Herod was in Jerusalem when some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Excuse me. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. When Herod heard that there was another king born in Judea, he was very upset, ah. as was everyone else in Jerusalem. Yeah, not you. So Herod called all the important priests and Jews together and asked them where this king was supposed to be born. The Jews knew that their king would eventually come and was always told to them that the king of the Jews, the savior of the world, would be born in Bethlehem. So they told that to King Herod. Then King Herod thought of a way to trick the wise men. So he called a private meeting with them and learned from them when the king of the Jews star first appeared. Oh God! And then King Herod told the wise men, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. Eh, okay. Hey, on your way. But secretly, Herod wanted to know where the king of the Jews was, so he could get rid of him. So the wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where Jesus was, and the wise men were filled with joy. Woohoo! They went into the house and saw Mary and Jesus. Hello. Oh, look, wow. And they bowed down and worshiped Jesus. Wait. They gave him special gifts fit for the king that he was, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then God warned them in a dream to not go home through Jerusalem, where King Herod was. But God told them to go home a different way. So they did, and then an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up. The angel told Joseph to go to Egypt with Mary and Jesus because Herod was looking to kill Jesus. That very night, Joseph left for Egypt with Jesus and Mary. They stayed in Egypt until Herod was gone and it was safe for them to go home to Israel. <laughs> When they returned, an angel warned them about the new ruler of Judea, who was Herod's son. This way. So Joseph and his family went to the region of Galilee and found their new home in the town of Nazareth. Look good? Yep. We're taking it. Where Jesus would grow up and eventually do all the amazing things God had planned for him to do. Kids, isn't that story amazing? Those wise men had been waiting and waiting and waiting. Probably their fathers had been waiting, their grandfathers had been waiting, even their great-grandfathers had been waiting for the newborn king who would be the Messiah, the savior of the world. Imagine how they felt when they saw the star shining in the sky, leading them to Jesus. They must have been so excited. So they followed the star and they traveled a long distance to get to where Jesus was. Then check out what happened when they got there. In Matthew chapter two, it says this, the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary. 
and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Most people don't buy presents of gold, frankincense, and myrrh for a baby. But these men knew that this tiny baby was the King of Kings, Jesus, the Messiah. So they chose to give their best to him and to worship him. And what we can learn from this story is that Jesus is our king too. He deserves our very best and he deserves our worship. So this Christmas season, I want to encourage you with this, to remember that Jesus is our king. He deserves our best and he deserves our worship. While you're opening your presents and celebrating with your family and eating delicious food and singing Christmas carols, remember this. The reason that we get to celebrate Christmas is because Jesus the King was born. And I want to encourage you that just like the wise men gave their best to Jesus and worshiped him, you and I can give our best to Jesus and worship him. Let's pray together and then we are gonna sing one more song to worship our King. Jesus, we love you and we thank you that you came to the earth to be our King. We praise you and we worship you and God, we give you our very best. We love you, Jesus, and today we celebrate you. It's in your name we pray, amen. Okay, kids, let's give Jesus our very best and worship the King. Ocean. You can drown me, the sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste and see I'm under grace, the place to be, it means I'll never need an umbrella I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather, whether or never I ever Understand I'm a man in the hands of great plans, I stand with faith there in the life I never known to touch and still I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end, this is living The life I've been given's a gift, if I'm a living, I'm a living to death So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end, this is living The life I've been given's a gift, if I'm a living, I'm a living to death
you have been hanging out with us for Christmas with the pranks. We've had so much fun pranking each other, but Pastor Maddie, I think we should call it quits, doing an official truce right here, right now. Okay, no more pranks? No more pranks. In fact, to show you no more pranks, I got you this real Christmas present. No diapers, no carrots, <laughs> no nothing crazy Thanks. real Christmas present. Thank you, Pastor Cannon, and I made you this real Christmas cookie. Oh, no pranks. Yummy. No ranch dressing? No ranch dressing. Ooh, it smells so good. Good. Kids, thanks for hanging out with us, and we do not want you to miss next week because guess what? It's Christmas Day next week, and we are going to have a super fun service with surprises and the Christmas story. Plus, we're going to be wearing our Christmas jammies. Kids, we don't want you to miss a single week here at James River Kids Online. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out. We will see you next week for Christmas at James River Kids. Bye! Bye. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas.